Did you know you can use Google Sheets to compute a 72T payment? Hi, this is financial planner Sean Mullaney. Let's discuss. So 72T is a way to get around that pesky early withdrawal penalty when we're trying to tap into our retirement accounts to live off of before age 59 and a half. And look, I don't think it's usually a go-to strategy, but there are plenty of Americans who are sitting there in their late 40s, early to mid 50s, you know, a million, two million, three million in traditional deferred retirement accounts, traditional IRAs, traditional 401ks, and they're thinking about retiring, but most of the wealth is in those traditional deferred accounts and they're worried about that 10% early withdrawal penalty. It's a real hurdle. But the 72T can be a great workaround and you can compute how to do that with Google Sheets. I'm about to show you. I will say oftentimes 72T requires thinking about maybe getting some professional assistance, right? Because it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, but it is good to have a, a spreadsheet potentially that could give you some educational knowledge so you can have an informed conversation about a 72T IRA and what a payout would look like and that sort of thing. So I want to imagine a sort of a base case here. We have somebody who's 53 years old. Remember that number, 53 years old. And they've got, it might be 2 million, it might be 3 million, it might be 2.5 million in a 401k at work or other qualified plan. And they want to take a $80,000 annual payment out of that, will eventually be an IRA, we'll talk about that in a second, to live off of every year. All right, well, we have to do a few things, right? First of all, we're probably going to have to move that 401k into a traditional IRA. And then we're going to have to right size that IRA. What I mean by that is we can slice and dice one IRA into two IRAs. And if we're going to do a 72T payment, get around that 10% early withdrawal penalty, we're probably going to want to do that. So we want to have a non-72T IRA if we're going to do this, generally speaking, so that we maintain maximum flexibility in our retirement planning and in our finances. All right. So if we want to get that $80,000 payment, we got to do a little math and Google Sheets can help us with that. What we need is we need... Uh, three actually well, three inputs that will solve for a fourth. We're solving for the size of the IRA that generates, in this case, the $80,000 payment every year. To get that, we need an interest rate um, and we need a life expectancy. Those two generally come from the IRS. On the interest rate, we'll have some optionality, but generally speaking, those two are IRS provided. The amount is, that's the one thing we get to provide. That's $80,000 a year. And we have to take that every year uh, between the first distribution date and the later of turning 59 and a half or five years, right? So if we were 57, we'd have to take it for five years, not the 59 and a half. All right. So we're 53 in this example. So interest rate, where do we get our interest rate from? Well, if we look here, uh, this is IRS Treasury Notice 2022-6, I'll link to it in the description below, it tells us where we get our interest rate from. And so we're allowed to use a rate that's not more than the greater of 5%. So regardless of prevailing interest rates in the world, we always get to use 5%. We could use less, but we generally want to use at least 5%. We'll talk about that in a sec. Or 120% of the federal midterm rate determined in accordance, okay, that's fine, for either of the two months immediately preceding the month in which the distribution begins. And I'm recording this in November 2023. So let's just assume our distribution begins in November 2023. Just for the initial calculation, what I want to do is actually just use 5%. We'll come back to that higher interest rate potentially later on. But let's just use 5% to start. Life expectancy at age 53. And it's, um, it's our birthday age in the year of the first distribution. So if I'm taking my first distribution in November of 2023 and I turned 53 in April of 2023, well, that's my birthday age that year. So what I do is I go to this uh, single life expectancy table. This is in a regulation and I'll link to it in the description below. And I just search for my birthday age. So in April, I turned 53, let's say in this example. Um, so 53, the life expectancy there is 33.4 years. So I have to put that into my Google sheet here. Okay, that's fine. And then the amount is the annual payout I want, right? And that's $80,000. I get to pick that, right? So I've got my three inputs. 
And now, you know, let's say I have that 2 million 401k, I move it to an IRA, I call up my IRA institution, I say, well, I want a, a 72T payment, I'm going to take this 80, or 72T IRA, I'm going to take this payment out of, out of every year. And that needs to be a certain size according to this math formula that the IRS gives us. You know, and then there'll be a non 72 T, there'll be the remainder. So, how big is that 72 T IRA? Well, the way we solve for that is we do an, uh, an equal sign to start off. That's easy enough. And then I, I put a negative sign in here. You don't need to do it. I put the negative sign in here so that the software doesn't show me a negative number. I like to see positive numbers, right? I'm going to call my financial institution and say, Please set up two IRAs. One is exactly this size. I'm not going to tell them a negative number, right? That doesn't exist. And the formula is a present value formula. And the way Google Sheets does that is PV, right? So I enter equal sign, negative sign, PV. Then I hit an open parenthesis. And now I have to enter interest rate time frame, which is the life expectancy, and the annual payment amount. I have to enter those in sequential order in order for the calculation to work correctly, right? Because it's looking for the interest rate first and then the, the time frame and then the uh, amount. So the first thing I do is I enter in the cell for the interest rate and I hit a comma, right? And then I enter in the cell for the life expectancy, hit a comma. And then I enter in the cell for the annual payment, which is 80,000 in my case. And I hit a close parenthesis and bam. I get the size of the 72 T IRA I need to establish with my financial institution. So, okay, financial institution, you have, you know, 2 million and change in one IRA today. All right, ring, 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 call them up and say, hey, financial institution, please break that into, into two IRAs. One is going to be uh, for this exact number. Here's the number. And then the other will be just for whatever's left over. And I'm going to take my annual 72 T payment out of the 1.286 million IRA, right? And then this all works. Now, how do we know I got it right? Okay, well, the IRS gave us an example that's on their website here. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. Uh, they give us an example of somebody who's 50 years old and they want to use a 4% interest rate on a $400,000 uh, 72T IRA. Okay, now I will say the IRS is not in the business of giving us planning advice. Um, my recommendation to most folks is to use as high an interest rate as possible. So in their example, they're using 4%. It's allowable, but most people are going to want to use a higher interest rate. You know, But okay, fine, let's just use 4%. Let's see if we can't back into the IRS calculation, which will help validate that we did this right, right? So 4% is the interest rate. The life expectancy in this case is actually at, a, uh, at age 50. And that factor is 36.2 off this regulation. I could prove that right there. You see the 36.2, hopefully. All right. And then they're saying the annual payment, if they do this fixed amortization wrong uh, thing here, the fixed amortization would be this $21,102, right? There are different methods. The one I'm doing in this video is the fixed amortization method, which I, I tend to think is the, the most commonly used and the most user friendly one. So let's go in, let's put in this payment number, 21102. So in this that's their example. And they're saying the the 72 T IRA would be about four hundred thousand dollars. Well, do we get that same uh, result if we use the formula I just used? Well, we hit copy and we hit paste, and look what we get. We get real, real close. Well, why are we real, real close and not 100% right? Well, the IRS, uh, you know, does not uh, compute out to cents. They just use whole dollar amounts. So that's allowable. Um, you know, the funny thing is we could use a cent for this payment, right? If we did 21101.63, look what that's going to do. It's going to get us to a nickel within $400,000 $400, exactly. So our formula works you know, if I were doing it, I would just, you know, pick a flat dollar amount to take every year, an even number, whether that's 40,000, 20,000, 60,000, 10,000, 70,000, just a flat dollar amount, and then get the IRA size to the exact penny. That's just the way I would approach it. Now, one other thing I want to mention here is 
you know, I said, well, we're going to use 5% for our example, but we can use a higher interest rate if either of the two previous months has a 120% of federal midterm rate that is greater than 5%. And there's a link we can go to for that. I'll put that in the description. So we could use September or October. September was a little greater, but only 5.04%. So, okay, that's not going to do much. But look at October. It was 5.33. So we can use that number, and that will change our calculation, and that'll let us have a smaller 72T IRA, leaving more money in the non-72T IRA in my example. So if we just change our interest rate here to 5.33, guess what? We just reduce the size of that uh, 72T IRA, not by much, right? If I undo it, it was, you know, I guess that's about $50,000. It's a smaller uh, 72T IRA. We like to keep our 72T IRAs as small as possible, if possible, by using the highest interest rate possible or allowable. Um, So look, 72T, it is not something I generally like to to use as a go-to strategy, But depends on your circumstances, and there are plenty of Americans who have a lot of their financial wealth in these traditional deferred accounts and have sufficient wealth to retire, but the 10% early withdrawal penalty is a real issue. And so I like having this out there as something we can look at as a potential planning alternative. And I do think these often benefit from some professional assistance, but I also think it's good for folks to do some of their own analysis so they can have an informed conversation with a tax professional or financial planner or other advisor. Let me know what you think about 72T in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please mash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.